Hello, this is John from One Hour Academy welcoming you to my final lesson on jQuery. So uh, here what you're looking at is a preview of uh, our final product. So what I've got here is a table with some data from the recent Winter Men's Olympics results, gold medal winners. Um, it's not entirely accurate. I stole this from, I think, Wikipedia. And I think I modified it a bit just to make it fit a little better. But uh, what we're going to do is we're going to uh, create this little application here where we can uh, drop down and filter by country and we can also uh, click show all to uh, to show all the countries again. There's lots to do so let's get started. So we start in Aptana Studio and I use this for all of my web development projects. I'm gonna go File, New and I'm just gonna choose a basic web project. And for a template, I'm just going to stick with a default template because I'm going to take the code and steal it from my website in just a second. For a project name, I'll call it jQuery Search. And that's all I need to do on this step, so I'll just hit Finish here. So then, now that we've got an empty project, we need to create a single file that we can then copy our code into. So I'm going to go File, and I'll hit New, File, New, there we go, and just choose Generic File, okay? And all i got to do is give it a name in my project so anything will do search.html as long as it has the HTML extension so it's recognized as a web page and that's it so I'm going to hit finish and at this point I'm going to go over to one hour Academy so in my browser I'm going to type onehouracademy.com you can see the address up there and under courses I'll choose jQuery in one hour and at the bottom of the course content is where the download files are now for lesson six I've done things a little bit differently um, you'll see here if I open this, it's going to basically go to a new page and just have the source code right there. So there's the table we're working with. If I right click that and go to view page source, this is the source code that I'm going to steal and put into my web page. So if I just right click, or sorry, if I just highlight it first and then I right click and I copy it, okay, now I've got the code and then I'm going to go back into Aptana Studio and that page that I just created, I'm going to paste it in there. So here I am in Aptana and I'll just uh, maximize that, right click and paste and there's the code alright so um, let's just save this and I'm just gonna preview what we have so far so if I push play you're just gonna see a very plain table just like the one we saw when we were over at one hour Academy on that one page so now we have it locally in Aptana so we can work with it here so there it is uh, nothing too exciting just a plain table but before we start, I think what I'll do is I'll just show you a little closer what we've done with this code I'm giving you. So I've got a title tag at the top. So that's Men's Olympic Gold Winners. You can see that in the page tab there. Then I've got a call to my jQuery out at jQuery.com. Then I've got my script section with my startup and function startup. That's how I do all my jQuery pages. And then below that is just a body area with a, just a big table. So we start with a, a width and a cell padding setting for the table first row is going to be two th tags which are table headers for the event and the winner and then below that comes just a series of rows so tr slash tr and then within each row is the actual data td slash td so that goes all the way down I've got uh, each athlete uh, listed there in its own td slash td within the rows at the very bottom after my my very last row which is the men's snowboard cross I just finish my table finish the body and finish HTML okay so if you take a closer look at this data, you'll notice that every one of these listings has a three-letter country code. So there's AUT for Australia, USA for USA, obviously. And that's the data that we're going to send in to search and filter by country. All right, so let's get started with the actual uh, project now. So we're going to put some buttons in here now, and we're going to go to the very top of our table, just inside the body tag and we'll put a couple of buttons here so remember the button code is button and then followed by slash button in between there you put what you want uh, the button to say so this one is going to say show all let's fix that up there and then beside that button we'll have a second button so another button tag and this one is going to say filter now for now I need a place to type in a country code so beside those two buttons I'm going to create an input type text which will be just a little bit of a text box that I can type into. And while we're doing it, we're going to add a few other options here. We're going to uh, specify the size of this text box. So I'm going to go size equals 5 to make it small for a country code. 
We also have to give it an ID so later we can use jQuery to target it. So I'll call it TXT country because we're going to put a country code in there. And I should put that inside quotes. Let me just put quotes around that. Single or double quotes will work for this. Uh, while I'm at it, come to think of it, I should probably put IDs for the buttons as well so that later on we can target them through jQuery. So we'll call this one uh, B, well, show, BTN show. I like to put BTN in front of my show or in front of my buttons. This one will be an ID of BTN filter. So once I've got the buttons ID'd and the text field ID'd, um, let me just do a quick save here and I'm going to preview what we have. Okay, so you can see them up there at the top. I think I'm going to spread those out a little bit. I'm going to add a little bit of a right margin to the buttons so that they're spread out. So that's quite easy to do. If I just go into the style section here for a second, I'm going to just type in a button style. And I'm just going to set the margin right to uh, maybe 10 pixels, uh, just to put a little bit of space between each of, the, uh, each of the components there, including the text field. So push play again, and that looks uh, just great. Okay, so now we're ready for the next step, which is going to be to write some code for these buttons. Before we get to the button code, I just want to do a little bit of styling up here in Startup. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to talk to the table heading. Now watch how I do the CSS here. Because I'm going to address more than one property, um, it's going to be different. Now I'm going to also do some CSS on the table row, but just one property. And I did this on purpose so you could see the difference between the two. So if I'm going to do two properties, or more than one property, I have to list them in curly braces, whereas with the TR, it's straightforward. The property I want to modify is the background color, so I put that in quotes, or sorry, background rather, followed by a comma, and then the setting, which is simply going to be, I'm going to use this color called yellow green. Okay, so that's how you address a single property. If I want to address more than one, so here I'm going to do the background and the foreground color. So I'm going to go background with a colon and then the setting, which is going to be black. And then separate that with a comma. And then uh, the next setting is going to be color with another colon. And I'm going to set it to white. And I just noticed um, I didn't spell yellow green correctly down below. So I'm going to add a little N there. And uh, so that's it. You can see the difference between addressing one property versus two. If I save this, here's what it looks like. Black with green. Not too shabby. Now I want every other row to be green and every other row to be white. So I'm going to target that a bit more specifically. For the TR, I can filter this out with just the odd or even rows. So if I go back up to the TR reference here, I'm going to add a colon odd. And that's going to make every odd row that color. So it's going to give me kind of a striping effect here. So take a look at this when I refresh this. Okay, that looks a lot nicer, a lot easier to read as well. Okay, so that's how we can address CSS, either one property or more than one property. Okay, so now I'm not going to quite get to the buttons yet, but I am going to just lay the groundwork for this. Okay, so I'm going to get a reference to my, my BTN filter and my BTN show. Okay, so I'm going to go hashtag BTN filter, and I forgot to put the dollar sign in the front. I'll put that in just a second. But we go dot click. And then in brackets, we're going to type the name of the function that we want to run when we click on it. So I'm going to call that function filter. And now I'll do the same thing for BTN show. I'm going to put the dollar sign there first. There we go. So uh, same thing, dollar sign, um, hashtag BTN show, which is the name of my other button. And then I'm going to put dot click. And the name of the um, function I'm going to run here is just going to be, um, let's see, what shall we call it? Um, We'll just call it uh, show. Yeah, it's good enough. All right, so those are the two functions that jQuery will go looking for. So let's just put the shells in for now. And then in the next segment, we'll, we'll put in the code for this. So function filter, open and close bracket, and two braces. And then function show, the same thing. Open and close bracket, and two braces. And now we can maybe put some code in for these two functions. This next section is probably the trickiest part of this project. So we're going to filter out based on the country that somebody types in. So there's a process involved. The first thing I'm going to do, and I'm going to type some comments along the way so you can see this. I'm going to hide all the rows and then reset all the colors to white. 
So the proper way to do that is to go tr colon has td. So I'm filtering the, only the rows that have table data in them. And I want to do a dot hide on those. That'll take them away. So I'm going to save this and just quickly show you that this command on its own will just hide all of the rows. Okay, so I'll just do a quick save here. And we'll just play. And for now, the show all function isn't working yet. We haven't done anything there. But watch what happens when I hit filter. Okay, so there we go. Everything is taken away. Um, now, I just want to show you as a little aside. Um, my first inclination was to just go tr.hide. But jQuery apparently treats table headings as table rows as well. So now watch what happens when I filter. Everything goes away. So I had to tweak that a little bit and specify only the rows that have TD. So I'm going to put that back in there quickly. OK, so that's the first step. We want to take away all the rows and then reshow the ones that we are looking for. So the other thing we want to do is we want to undo all of the striping. So the easiest way to do that is to just do another TR uh, call to CSS. OK, so I'm going to go .CSS. And just like before, when I did the background yellow green, I'm just going to steal that and change it back to white. OK, and then later, once we've filtered, we're going to restripe it uh, with our results. OK, but for now, we'll just change that back to white. And um, that gets us ready to start building up the new collection of, of rows we're looking for. So the first thing involved in doing that is to read what the user typed into the country field. So I'll just put a little comment here. Read country from txt country, or from text box. Now, we called it txt country, so I'm going to store that result into a variable, which I'm just going to call country. OK, so we need to make a jQuery reference to txt country. I'm just going to quickly double check to make sure that's what I've called it. And yeah, sure enough, txt country. So hashtag txt country. After that, I'm going to put dot .val. Dot .val is jQuery's way of reading the value from the text box. OK, so now that we've got that, this next line is probably the trickiest line of all. So what we're going to do now is we're going to uh, store all the rows that have that country in them, OK, with, with using the contains filter, OK? So we're going to use another variable called rows to see. So var rows to see. And this just represents the rows of the table that I want to see based on the country filter. OK, so watch how I break this down. First of all, um, instead of using my usual single quotes, there's a need for me to use double quotes here as I start to refer to this. And you'll see why in a second. So I'm going to change that. Instead of double or single quotes, I'm going to go double quote TR. So double or single work. But in this case, I need to use double. And you'll see why in a second. Now I'm typing dot contains here, but it really is colon contains. So I'll throw the correct code up here. Now, if I said dot contains USA or colon contains USA, that would filter just the rows for USA. But I obviously, I don't want just USA. So if I replace that with the word country, we're getting closer. But country is a variable. And this will literally look for something called country. OK, so here's the proper way to say it. We're going to just close off the original expression with a double quote. And then after the variable country, which we're going to inject right in the middle, we're going to put a double quote on the other side to close off the expression. So you can see there what the official line is. OK, and, and I'm going to go back in a second and change the dot contains to colon contains. But in the meantime, we're not quite done yet. So now that we've grabbed the rows that we need, we're going to do our striping. And to filter for this, first I'm going to show everything. And uh, that's going to show all of the rows. Because originally, even though I've grabbed them from the original collection, they're still hidden at this point. OK, and, and this is where I do the striping. Now I can't use colon odd. I have to do a dot filter for odd. It's a little bit different because rows to see is uh, a variable, not a direct jQuery object. So this is a different way to filter on every other is to do dot filter odd. OK, and then from here it's the same. So I'm going to come back up and I'm going to steal the uh, background CSS. So I'll just tack that on to the end here. OK, now you'd think normally rows to see would just simply be um, you know, with, with the colon odd. So this is what I tried originally. I'm just going to put a little comment here. So rows to see colon odd did not work. So I'm just going to put that there as kind of a reminder. OK, so we're basically where we need to be on this now. Um, oh, I'm going to fix the colon, right? So I got to fix the tr to colon contain. So you can see it there. So now if I play this, you'll see that I can type in a country code like USA and hit filter. And sure enough, there's USA. OK, so that's working pretty good. Now let's take a look at the show all. We're going to go back and fix that up now. So under function show, um, really what we're going to do is we're going to grab a reference again to the TR. 
and we're going to uh, basically reset it again. Now the only difference is instead of dot hide, we're going to go dot show so that we can show all of the rows. And we're going to reset them all to white so that we can basically go back now and stripe the ones again that we want to stripe every other one. So we've written code like that in the past. If I just come up here and I'll steal it from the TR odd up there. So I'll just copy and paste that down here and that will restripe it again. The other thing I want to do when I show is to reset the text box, the TXT country. So if I take a reference to that, I can set the value of that back to two quotes by just going TXT country dot val equals or just two quotes right inside there. And that will erase whatever country code the person previously entered. OK, so we'll just put a little comment there. Set the value to nothing. All right, so if I save this, uh, nothing blank. Um, if I save this and preview it, we just want to retest the filtering and the show to make sure everything works properly. Okay, so um, if I type in a filter, I'll try uh, Norway this time and filter for Norway and then show all we will show everything back again. Okay, so this is working really well. We still have to work on uh, the drop down and designing the table a little bit better with better fonts. So that's coming up in the next part of the of the assignment. Go back to onehouracademy.com and open the additional code and copy and paste it. We're going to finish off by adding a drop down menu. So if I go to stuff.txt, which was copied earlier from the website, I'm going to highlight and copy all this HTML code here. And we're going to replace it into um, the actual website. Uh, that's not the right one there. I want to go to metals.html. There we go. And um, so I'm going to find TXT country. I'm going to just erase that and paste in the, the drop down menu. Notice that I've called it the same thing, TXT country. That's so that we don't have to um, change the code later. I'm just going to indent all these options here. So you can see how these drop downs are programmed. We get a value and then the name of the country beside it. It's the three letter value that's still going to get passed into the code. So it should work just like it did before. Um, this will just make it easier for us to pick a country. So if I save that and I uh, load up my browser and I'm just going to hit refresh here to get a new version and now I can just drop down and uh, filter my country this way. Okay, but the actual Austria is not being passed in. AUT gets passed in. The value gets passed in just as we programmed it in the drop down there. Okay, so the last thing I'm going to do is I'm going to just add a little bit of style to my TD. This will give us a nice looking font. So I'm going to go with a font family of uh, Verdana. So font family colon Verdana. And while I'm at it, maybe I'll give it a little bit of a more compact size. We'll go with a font size of 12 PX. So that'll be 12. And oh, it's got to put the PX in there. And uh, just like so. All right, so let's take a look one more time with our new font. And uh, it makes it look nice and professional. And the filtering, of course, still works just like it did before. And um, it's a really nice working application. So I hope you enjoyed that. That is the last of my tutorials on jQuery. And if you enjoyed that and you want to learn some more about different computer technologies and programming and software, then uh, please subscribe to my channel. Uh, this is John from One Hour Academy thanking you for going through this with me. And I hope to catch you in future lessons and future playlists. Bye for now.